guys welcome back to my channel Oshale here and in today's video I am going to talk to you guys about my December wrap-up we're gonna try to make this quick because I also want to include my Colleen Hoover month wrap-up in this video as well so let's go ahead and get started with that so as many of y'all know I declared December Colleen Hoover month and I vowed to read all of the Colleen Hoover novels that I own which are quite a lot and I did have my TBR unfortunately I didn't quite get to all of them I wanted to reread Slammed and I didn't get to that one but it was kind of the lowest on my priority list since it would be a reread and I didn't get to Without Marriage which so far is her newest release but I did read all the other ones so I definitely want to talk to you guys about that I was reading them in the order of publication so I started with Maybe Someday and I didn't I didn't really like it as much as I thought that I would which really surprised me I really found the romance to be distasteful in a way I don't like the whole cheating trope I don't think that it can be done very well I haven't seen it done well and I do consider emotional cheating to still be cheating I think that once you start having feelings for another person you need to break up with the person that you're with and you know make a clean slate of it with the other person that you've started to have feelings for and that just wasn't the case in this novel I started to see a lot of justification from both sides both the male protagonist and the female protagonist for their actions and it was just too melodramatic for me and not in a way that I enjoy not in like that telenovela like gone with the wind romantic type of way but just in a cringy morally wrong type of way and it gave me a lot of anxiety um, especially because the girlfriend of the male protagonist was such a sweet and lovely girl and his reasons for you know him saying he was never gonna leave her were really just distasteful and I feel like Colleen Hoover was trying to make it into this noble thing and it just was kind of it was just wrong it just it, it made his reasons basically made him view his girlfriend as an object of pity and someone to be looked after and not someone to be loved for who they are and I know I'm rambling and I don't want to give too many spoilers away but if those of you who have read this let me know how you feel I gave it three stars and then I think I went back and actually gave it two stars I'm just not down with the whole cheating thing emotional you know emotional an emotional connection with someone else outside of your relationship is cheating I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I said it that was my major problem with this novel I just I don't even want to go into the synopsis I will read all of the I will leave all of the good links pages linked down I just I can't I can't with this book I can't so as you can imagine when I picked up ugly love I just wasn't that excited after having that distasteful experience so ugly love was actually slightly better I gave it three stars but again I wasn't blown away this was another one where I found a lot of the reasons the male protagonist gave for just being a shitty human being to the female protagonist just wasn't good enough for me. Um, they kind of started a sexual relationship, no strings attached, because the male protagonist basically told the female protagonist that he just wasn't interested in love whatsoever. He was completely shut off. She didn't know anything about this guy, but she was so attracted to him that she decided that she was okay with just having a physical relationship with him. and. I just didn't buy it you know like the chemistry was well written but because of the way he was I think is my his name is Miles yeah the male protagonist's name is Miles and the female protagonist's name is Tate because of the way Miles was in his character I just didn't see any redeeming qualities in him and the way he treated Tate was just so wrong and his, the excuse was always oh he's damaged oh he's broken and I, I've started to see a pattern, you know, once I read Maybe Someday and then I read Ugly Love, I started to see a, a pattern that I do not agree with, with Colleen Hoover novels, where you have these shitty-ass male protagonists. I mean, they are just horrible. They are not good people. They are not, their characters aren't good. And they're treating these girls like trash. And their reasonings are, oh, I was hurt. I'm wounded. I'm damaged. I'm broken. And you know that's just not a good enough excuse and I don't think it sends a good message to the young impressionable girls who are reading these books like a man being damaged or broken or hurt or having a bad past or whatever the hell you want to call it is not reason enough to treat you like a piece of shit like that's just not a good reason and you should not involve yourself with that person <laughs> like that you, you just shouldn't like that's not someone you want to involve yourself with even just on a like purely physical level I do not agree with that I just I can't 
So I will just say that in these two novels, the male protagonist, I'm not down with it. So I gave this one three stars because the story was a little bit more interesting. With this book, there was literally nothing in the plot. That was another thing that I didn't like. The plot completely revolved around the relationship between the male and female protagonists and all the drama surrounded them. I think everything happened in like this one apartment and it drove me insane. Nothing else happened and there were there was no action really. It was kind of like everything happening in one room. And the funny thing is I love plays where stuff happens like that. Like a play that comes to mind is The Dollhouse. Love that play. Everything happens in this one apartment and it's so good. But with a play there's still there's so much happening with the dialogue and the dialogue just wasn't good enough, the character development wasn't good enough to carry just absolutely no actual action. So with this one I gave it a slightly higher rating because there were other things going on and we weren't just locked into this one apartment, which I appreciated. And you know, it was a little bit better, the cheating thing wasn't there, so that was great. But all in all, these male protagonists and these two novels I am not okay with, I'm not okay with the message that it's giving to potentially young and impressionable readers, especially female readers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not down with it at all. It, it was ugly love, it was not cute. And the ending did not redeem Miles for me. I'm sorry, the ending, he was not redeemed in my eyes. Same thing with Maybe Someday, just no, no. So, as you can see, this is not a good pattern. So when I picked up with It Ends With Us, I had zero expectations. When I tell you I had zero expectations, I had zero expectations. And I was blown away. I gave this book five stars. It was amazing. I was moved. I was heartbroken. I fell in love. I laughed. I cried. I haven't been moved by a book like this in so long. I can't even remember the last time, although I'm sure when I do my favorite books of 2017, um, video I will remember tons of times, but this book moved me on such a deeply profound level I honestly can't even fully put it into words. I recommend this highly. I think Colleen Hoover is actually at her best when she writes about real issues and real things that are happening in the world. It brings to mind one of her other novels, Hopeless, which is actually also a duology, and that book blew me away, and yes it had its melodramatic moments, but it was truly fantastic and I didn't include it in this Colleen Hoover month because I read it long ago and I'm, not, I'm just not emotionally ready to read it again. It was really a harrowing read for me and it emotionally drained me so I don't know if or when I'll ever read that book again. But Colleen Hoover likes to say that she writes purely for entertainment and she's not writing for anything else. She's writing purely for entertainment value and you know that's why her books are so over the top and melodramatic because she's just writing for entertainment for nothing else. But I actually think she's at her best when she tackles real topics, things that are truly important and that need to be said and stories that need to be told from a social standpoint. And this book gave me all of that and she really shined in this book. Her writing shined, the character development shined, the story was so good. There were so many twists I did not see coming, I didn't know who not to root for, the villain was humanized and wasn't really a villain. I mean this book was just really good. I know I'm not giving any synopses right now and I'm so sorry but once again I will link this down below so you can go check out the Goodreads page and get the synopsis and I did give synopses of all these books in my in my TBR video for Colleen Hoover Month so I will link that below as well but I just I love this book I cannot recommend it enough I highly recommend you read this if you haven't read any Colleen Hoover books I recommend this one for sure so good and the last book I read during Colleen Hoover Month is Confess I gave this one four stars, but I'm feeling more three and a half stars. It was good. I, I wasn't blown away. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Uh, I didn't hate the male protagonist in this one, so hmm, progress. And I don't know, maybe this book was just a little too juvenile for me. I saw all the twists and turns coming. It was a very predictable plot to me. I feel like Colleen Hoover was trying to make it more mysterious, but I didn't really think it was mysterious. I kind of figured it out. Maybe because I think I've read another book that was very similar to this. Another new adult book that pretty much had the same plot as this, if not exactly the same. So maybe that wasn't helpful. But um, yeah, I confess, it was, it was decent. It was decent. Once again, this will be linked down below, the Goodreads page. Go check out the synopsis down there. I don't want to make this video too long. Moving on to the other books I read in December, just to give you some stats, I read 
14 books, technically 12 books and two novellas, and I want to move on to another physical book I read because the rest are ebooks, and this is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. I was really disappointed by this read, unfortunately. I had such high expectations. I love books about fairies, I love fantasy novels, and I was really highly anticipating this one, and it just let me down. It, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I didn't truly enjoy it. I actually stopped about two-thirds of the way through and I didn't pick it up again until the last couple days of the month and I kind of forced myself to finish it. I think it started off very intriguing but somewhere in the middle it started to lag and it just dragged and by the end I was just ready for it to be over. I found the writing to be the strongest point of this novel. The story didn't really hold my attention as much as I wished it would have and the main protagonist didn't endear my, themselves to me like I wish they had. The female protagonist annoyed me at times. The male protagonist actually was my favorite out of the two. And the world building was not as rich as I wish it would have been. I had, it was left with a lot of questions by the end. So yeah, I think I gave this one three stars. So moving on, I'm really just going to talk about the books that I really truly loved this month. I just don't want to go into all 12 books and 14 novellas. This doesn't take forever. So I just want to talk about the books that I really enjoyed. I started a series, the Denver Rebel series by Maureen Smith. The first book was Wicked Games, followed by the second book, which is called The Swede. And I actually read them out of order. I read the second book first, and then I read the first book. And I, I will say they can be read out of order. I mean, you will be spoiled for the first book if you read the second book first, but it's not really a big deal. These books are adult romance books featuring interracial couples or IR relationships with a white male protagonist and a black female protagonist and the white male protagonists are hockey players so it's going to be a whole series following these hockey players on this team and I don't know why I read them out of order I think I just found the second book and it really caught my attention so I just went ahead and read it and you know it's a romance so it's following the couple and how they fall in love and their strengths and and weaknesses and ups and downs and character development so it doesn't really matter you know they're going to end up together in the end so doesn't matter if you're spoiled, at least in my my opinion. I loved them. I loved this book. Both of them. I love both of these books and I love this series and I cannot wait to continue. I found the series to be very, very interesting. I don't know a lot about hockey, but I love hockey books and I love sports romances in general. So I am a sucker for any type of sports romance. It could be hockey, baseball, basketball, football. Football is my favorite, but hockey, I, I used to read a lot of hockey romances in college. So this was kind of a nice nostalgia type of thing that I was experiencing while I was reading this series. But I will say that the male protagonists are great. You will love them. Great people, great characters. Definitely was rooting for the couple. It was interesting to see an IR relationship in this type of setting. It's not something that we see a lot in romance. And even in IR romance books, we don't see a lot of like hockey player type romances. So this was great. I really enjoyed it. And I recommend these if you are interested in adult romance or sports romance. So IR romance books. Another book that I read that I am obsessed with is by one of my new favorite authors, Love Belvin. And it's called Love in the Rhythm of Blues. And this book blew me away. And as I've read a lot of Love Belvin books, the main character in this novel is kind of, has been a side character in one of her series, in two of her series actually, this male protagonist has been a side character. And he is a famous R&B slash gospel singer called Rage. I think that's how you pronounce his name. It's either Rage or Ray G. I never quite got it. But to me, I read it as Rage. And he has this very secretive life and he acquires a wife and the way that it goes down is super shady and it's not something that he wants but something that he feels forced to do by his management team and the way their relationship progresses i can't even explain the way love belvin wrote this book but it was sure it was sheer brilliance i loved everything about it i loved the writing i loved the character development i loved the way the scenes were put together i loved learning about the music industry I loved Rage and I loved the female protagonist, I can't remember her name and I feel really bad. I loved how this book was like an onion. You started out with the outer layer and you kind of got like what was going on and the gist. And as you unpeeled back the layers, the book just got richer and richer and more meaningful and more interesting. And by the time I turned the last page, 
I was legitimately angry because I was so mad the book was over and it left off on a cliffhanger and there's going to be another book and I can't wait and I keep checking Love Belvin's Amazon page and refreshing and refreshing hoping that she has dropped the second book but she hasn't and I don't know when she will and I'm so excited for this new series I found. I fell in love. I highly recommend this one. Love Belvin writes African-American romance books and I love her. Next up I want to talk about a book that actually came out in December and it is Kristen Ashley's latest. Sorry, Teddy's just very needy right now and he needs he needs some love. You okay? It's Kristen Ashley's latest and it is called The Hookup and this took me by surprise because I love Kristen Ashley. I mean, I, nine times out of ten I'm going to love what she has written. I just, she's an autobi author for me. She excels at storytelling and I love that her books are so long and she takes so much time to build the characters, develop the characters, story. I love that the storylines are so intricate. I love that she has all these side characters and all these different plot lines going on. I just love it. I, I basically just love the way she writes. I love her style of storytelling. So I wasn't going into it hated or anything, but it completely shocked me and took me by surprise how much I loved it, especially because it started off kind of on an even keel and I didn't have any strong emotions or feelings towards it, but by the end I was like, oh my god, I really love this book. And I think it's because she took a concept that is very much used and popular in romance fiction and that is the concept of a relationship starting off with a one night stand and it's been done many many times but the way she did it was so real and so just honest and it flowed so effortlessly and the chemistry between the two characters was so real their relationship was so real and just I loved it the female protagonist was amazing her level of honesty and how much she knew herself was brilliant the main protagonist even though he had been hurt okay Colin Hoover it didn't turn him into an asshole. He was actually a really decent, good guy. And the way their relationship unfolded was so beautiful and so fun and entertaining entertaining to read that I know I will definitely be rereading this one. Four stars. But not least is a novella by Jacintha Howard, another one of my new favorite authors that write African American fiction slash romance. And this novella is called Or and oh, I loved it so much it really shocked me how much I loved it because it is just a novella it was about 135 pages I think it wasn't really a lot of pages and I realized I loved it because basically when it was done I flipped the last page and I was like oh no it's over and I wish that it was a full-length novel because I wanted to read more and it's basically about this girl that is home for the holidays in her hometown and she doesn't really come back she hasn't really been back since she left and she's here to visit her mother who is really her only family but her mother has a boyfriend now and you know she goes to this party with her best friend Christmas Eve and she's bored out of her mind so bored that she starts reading on her phone because she doesn't want to be there and a guy comes up to her and he's someone that she knew from high school but they didn't run in the same circles and he was a lot older than her so she didn't remember him and he starts teasing her and kind of sparks fly and he invites her to spend Christmas with him the next day and she's not taking him seriously at all she leaves the party and she's intrigued and she's certainly attracted to him but she's not really planning on ever seeing him again and she goes home and one thing leads to another and her mother has to leave town with her boyfriend for her boyfriend has a family emergency and she ends up spending so now it looks like she's going to spend Christmas alone it's Christmas Eve by the way so she's kind of warming up to the idea she figures that she's just gonna eat her mom's Christmas cookies and snuggle in and watch some Netflix and everything will be fine but then the power goes out and it is freezing and there's a winter storm that starts and she's completely terrified so she thinks you know what I'm just gonna get in my car and I'm gonna drive back to my house which I guess where she lives her, her her town where she lives is like a few hours away so she gets in her car but she shouldn't have because this storm is getting worse and worse long story short she gets stranded on the highway and her phone is dying and losing battery life so who does she call 
why the handsome gentleman she met at the party, of course. And he comes and he rescues her from the cold and takes her back home with him. And she ends up spending Christmas with him and his family. And things happen and sparks fly. And it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful story. I read it on Christmas Eve and it was the perfect read to read on Christmas Eve. And I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. So that is it for my December 2017 wrap up. It was a great way to end the year. I read some books that actually end up on my favorites list of 2017. So stay tuned for that video. It's coming up next. All in all, just to give you some stats, um, as I've said already, I read 12 books, two novellas, so 14 written works in total. And in total, I read 5,088 pages, which is pretty darned good if I do say so myself. So that is it for this video. Stay tuned for my next video. I will catch you guys there. And thanks so much for watching, stopping by and hanging out with me. Love you guys. Bye. Bye, guys. I found so many new favorite authors, but I will now always look for their new releases. And I'm so excited to add them to my list of favorite authors. Christina C. Jones, Love Belvin, Be Love, Jacintha Howard, Jai Brine, Nia Forrester, Maureen Smith, Joel E. Ann, Dylan Allen, Kennedy Ryan, and so, so many more. The last reading highlight that I want to discuss with you guys is